Hi, my name is Victor Bart. Welcome to Retro Machines. And this video will be an unboxing of this beauty, the Sound Blaster AWE32. This video is sponsored by my long-term sponsor PCBWay. If you want your circuit boards designed, realized, and printed, you should check out PCBWay. Starting prices as low as five dollar for a one or two layer design. Merry Christmas! Check out the PCBWay big sales for special deals, free Christmas coupons, and much more. Place your order now. Links in the description. This box is super big and heavy, and a friend of mine, Stitch, found it for. 7.5 euros in a thrift shop, but it was not only this box. Including in the 7.5 euros was my Sound Blaster Live in box, <laughs> a Fudu 3 and some games. And that was maybe 5 years ago. Before 3D support, sound was really the big thing and where you wanted to invest your money in. In my own 286 uh, machine I started with an Adlib sound card, but that was mostly for music. And I really loved the Wolfstein 3D screen where the text sound cards and that was amazing. But I wanted to have a real sound card. So after that I upgraded to some random cheap Sound Blaster compatible uh, sound card. So you have wave support and sound effects and music but the music was really crappy midi <laughs> so yeah it was not that good of an experience in compare of this beauty but back in the day we didn't know about how it could sound because we only had cheap sound cards then a friend of mine got in his pentium 60 an awe32 and that was also around the time uh, of Duke Nukem 3D and games like that and the first time we heard the MIDI of the AWE 32 and how rich it sounded we all wanted to have something like this I never got an AWE 32 myself in my machine because I uh, bought brand new an AWE 64 SE the like the budget version but still Great MIDI, great sound, really rich and deep MIDI sounds. The AWE 32s and the AWE 64s is in my opinion the sound card to get for a DOS machine. But a lot of people like the Kravis Ultrasounds or other brands. But personally for me, how I uh, experienced the machines back in the days, Sound Blaster is the way to go. I'm super happy with this in a box Sound Blaster AWE 32 because yeah it's just an amazing find. We have a Sound Blaster AWE 32 with advanced wave effect synthesis, 16 bit CD quality, uh, stereo recording and playback, orchestral 32 voice poly pony with advanced wave effect synthesis way too difficult words for me uh, in the morning <laughs> programmable our a32 effect engine reverb and chorus or Q sound and a lot of extra things and it has memory support and I will show you that later if the card is out 20 voice OPL FM music synthesizer multi CD ROM interface really complete card with everything you wanted to have so this is the front of the box, here the big PCB, some music instruments, some locos. The side of the box has everything that's included in this package. The top of the box is just plain, same as the bottom. And here's some extra information on the side. And a lot of text and explanation on the back because there's also uh, a lot of software by it and here some more details of the specs yeah let's uh, open this box and one detail that is nice to know is copyright 1994 so this is like pre Windows 95 era so it says here Microsoft Windows compatible and it never says any Windows 95 compatibility but this card works perfectly in Windows 95, 98, NT, uh, Windows 2000 and so on. So in 
inside the outer box we have this inner box and this is complete including the foam and stuff like that so here we have the card in an anti-static bag so let's uh, see that later we have a user guide, a user guide for Vienna SF Studio, Windows 3.1 uh, user guide, a getting started guide, and this is actually a complete book. A user guide for HSC Interactive, not sure what it is, but also a really big guide. Here a leaflet uh, to connect a microphone, technical support contacts, a user guide for voice assist, and a user guide for text assist. Here the warranty card, which not filled in. A user guide for Q sound. Here a cable to connect your CD-ROM player to your sound card, so you could play uh, music CDs. And the way how it worked, that the CD-ROM player played the music CDs directly and converted it into stereo audio. So that's why they have three cables, left channel, right channel and a combined earth. In the early days every CD-ROM player had his own connector type. So that's why they have like a multi cable. And in later CD-ROM players they had one standard. So you didn't have to get like a uh, multi cable and find out which could connect to your CD-ROM player. Here we have the original microphone and I think a lot of people will recognize this microphone and had it next to their computer. The sound quality is not so super but I think it's an iconic uh, microphone. The cable is not so long so you had to have your computer next to your desk otherwise this couldn't work. But I think a lot of people had their first voice recordings with this uh, iconic microphone. So in this paperback we have a lot of floppies and there are already some copies. So the first diskette is a copy, but this is the AWA32 DOS drivers and Windows 95 DLLs. So they probably got new drivers with this card from Windows 95 and made their own diskettes. And here the AWA32 Aswires disk, the text assist program disk, Cakewalk. Apprentice for Windows, Cakewalk Disk 1, Vienna SF Studio Program Disk, Voice Assist Program Disk, HSS Interactive Special Edition Program Disk, Sunblast uh, RWA32 Utilities Disk, the Application Disk, and this the uh, Installation Disk, and here also a copied uh, diskette RWA Control Panel for Windows 95 and NT, RWA drivers for Windows 95, Revision 3, 4, 5, 6. And what I like is they didn't write on this label but they probably typed it with a typewriter or maybe printed it. This was pretty advanced because I never knew how I uh, could print or type on these labels. So it looks like all the drivers and the tools and the programs are included. So let's now take a look at the Sound Blaster. AWE32 and this is a CT2760 uh, version and there also are uh, newer versions so I think this is one of the older versions of the AWE32 and the first thing you notice is it has memory slots here so you could add 30 pin sims to your sound card to load uh, more sound effects uh, into your sound card and a nice detail is uh, when this card came out a lot of systems went to 72 pin uh, memory so you had uh, probably old 1 or 4 megabyte 30 pin uh, sims laying around so you could easily upgrade your sound card with older memory that you didn't use anymore. A line in, a mic in, a line out and a speaker out. So if you had like a powered speakers you put it on the line out and if you had unpowered speakers which was then a trend you could put it on the speaker out so that had a higher uh, volume output. And we have here a cane port for uh, joysticks or cane pads. And here on the rear you see some ports and this is for CD-ROM players because also back in the days they didn't have like a good IDE standard for CD-ROM players and every 
company was doing their own thing and have their own interface cards for their CD-ROM solution. And some of the more advanced sound cards had the CD-ROM interfaces integrated on the board. So you didn't have to have like the add-on card for a CD-ROM player. You could just use the uh, sound card. And back in the days before the 3D support, uh, multimedia was a big thing. So you added a sound card and a CD-ROM player and speakers to your computer and had like multimedia effects and encyclopedies on CD-ROMs and stuff like that. So this one has some different interfaces like this creative Panasonic interface, Sony and another interface, not sure which it is. Here you could set the jumpers for which interface you used. And here you see a Mitsumi chip. So that's probably a controller for one of the CD-ROM ports. And also here is a memory module because there's also onboard memory on this uh, card. And this card has a lot of jumpers so it's probably not plug and play. So you really had to set the jumpers for what IRQ and other resources it used. And the card is made in 1994, made in Singapore. On all the big chips it says creative, so this card has only creative chips for the sound because sometimes you have Yamaha chips or something else on cards like these, but this is completely creative and there's even an Intel uh, chip here. And this port is uh, to connect the CD-ROM cable to play audio CDs. And this is also the old style because in later versions of sound cards they upgraded to one standard uh, cable. But that is not compatible with this card. And here you have a wavetable connector so you could add uh, upgrades on this card. And you could uh, connect your PC speaker to your sound card. Not sure why you wanted to do that but it is an option. And this sound card has a 16-bit ESA connector and it is compatible from 286 machines up to Pentium 3 machines with ISA. So here you have it, the original Sound Blaster AWA32 pre Windows 95. And I think this is an amazing card for in the collection and the system specs I checked on the box and it says 386. S625 or compatible, 2 megabytes of memory, Windows 3.1 recommended and powered speakers because the speaker out is probably not the greatest experience with non-powered speakers with a powerful card as these. And the games sound so amazing like Doom and Duke Nukem and, and Raptor and just all the mini games are insane on this card and that's uh, why this card is so much cooler uh, over uh, like an um, Sound Blaster 16 because this has like the great MIDI sound. For just normal wave uh, sound a Sound Blaster 16 is probably comparable but for music and MIDI this is absolute and beast of a card. So if you like to support me you can support me monthly on Patreon and get access to my Discord server or you can use my Amazon affiliated links and thanks for watching and a happy new year.